Hello, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Osar Consulting. In our last video, we talked about how to mobilize the rib cage, the thorax, and then how to breathe off a nice mobile thorax. In this video, we'll cover how do we now stabilize and breathe at the same time. Because the challenge that comes for us is we know, we may know how to move, we may know how to stabilize, we may know how to breathe, but it's hard to combine all three things. And it's important for proper function that we're able to breathe, move, and stabilize together. And if we're able to do that, we'll decrease a lot of our low back pain, neck pain, is chronic tension that we generally have. And this is what's missing in a lot of our tr traditional therapies, in chiropractic care, in massage therapy, in physical therapy, because we'll mobilize, we'll stabilize, we'll teach people how to move, but we don't teach people how to integrate the systems. So that's what we're going to do in this next segment of videos. So, just to recap, and Melissa breathe in, making sure she expands three-dimensionally through her ribcage, like a balloon, and then relax. Perfect. I'll have her do that one more time. So she, she, she will breathe in, she'll breathe out, and then have her hold her breath out. I'm going to slide my hands down and have her push her contract her abdominal muscles so they should push my fingers out of her abdomen. So relax again, Melissa. Let's do that again. So breathe in. Breathe out. Perfect. All the air comes out of her lungs. Good. Hold it. Push my fingers out. Perfect. And now put my fingers right here to the side to make sure she has contraction there too. She'll push her fingers out toward my fingers. I'll have Melissa feel exactly where I have my hands so she can monitor herself. We have to have a contraction here. We have to have a contraction here to make sure that the rib cage is stabilized to the pelvis. That's the function of our abdominal muscles. And she'll continue to breathe with this activation here. Because again, we want to combine the breathing and the activation so we have a stable, functional system. Now I'm going to listen to this for a couple of minutes to go home and practice this as well as part of our home exercises. A lot of clients, patients, can only do one or two breaths before they feel like they're, they're gasping for breath. Then I'll just have her relax, just relax everything listen, and just kind of breathe normally. Because part of the training is to build up the endurance of these muscles. It's not just a strength issue, it's an endurance, it's a control issue. Most people that have back pain don't have weak cores, they just have dysfunctional or lack the endurance in their core. So what we're trying to do is build up their breathing tolerance, their endurance tolerance, so that they can function for a longer period of time without dysfunction. So again, I'll have Melissa activate here, push your fingers out, perfect. Push out towards your thumbs here, perfect, good. And continue that three-dimensional breathing, keeping the neck and shoulders relaxed as possible. Perfect, awesome. And I'll have her work on this for a couple minutes at a time at home. Maybe one to two breaths, three or four breaths, depending on her tolerance, to relax, reset, continue breathing. Once she's mastered this, then we can start to put a little bit of a load through her system. What I mean by a load is some resistance. So I'll have Melissa continue to hold this, continue to breathe. I want her to bring one leg up and put the leg back down and alternate each side. Maintaining this activation here, maintaining her core breathing. There should be no bracing, no rigidity in her system. She should be able to stabilize, lift the leg without any shifting of motion at all. A lot of people say, hey, this is too easy. But remember, we're trying to reestablish proper control, not see how much we can tax the system. This is what core training should be about. Not how many leg lifts you can do, not how many crunches you can do. This is core control. And relax. How long this whole process should take? It should be about five minutes. It took us a little longer because we need some explanation and I wanted to show you exactly what to do. But the whole process should take about five minutes. It's something you work on every single day. As you build up your tolerance, you can increase the amount of repetitions you do with your legs. You can start to add in squats and lunges and step ups and things like that. But the core principle is we must be able to breathe properly through our thorax, move our thorax, stabilize the low back and pelvis. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Osar Consulting. You can visit us at our website at www.osarconsulting.com and I look forward to speaking to you in the future.